Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we review hundreds of poker hands from vloggers all across YouTube to bring you 10 of the best. And this week is no exception. We've got 10 cracking hands lined up for you this week. As always, the link to the original content is in the description box below. So make sure to click on that. If you see a poker vlogger that you don't recognize, maybe one that you haven't seen in a while, click on the link, watch the video. It helps out their channels a bunch. So what have we got for you this week? Well, we've got quads, quads, and more quads. We've got hands that end just as you wouldn't expect them to. And in first place this week, we've got the perfect hand that couldn't possibly go wrong. Without further ado, let's make a start. And at number 10 this week, Close to Broke is playing at the Commerce in California. He's playing in a 5-10 cash game. And has anyone else heard of a parking lot hand? Anyone? Anyone? Early position was definitely a solid player, but very active and pretty aggressive. Decides to open up to 35 bucks. Three callers when it gets over to me in the small blind. There's four different people with $35 out there. And we look down at the ultimate squeeze play from the worst position in poker. We look down at ace queen of diamonds. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. I was thinking about squeezing here earlier in the same exact instance when I had five do suited, but hearing you guys is, you know, in my ear in the comment section about not playing these stupid hands, I decided against it. And in this time I've been rewarded as we look down to the premium. I decided three bed here to $180. Gotta really charge these folks here. Even going 200 plus makes more sense, but I end up landing on 180. The initial raiser does something very interesting as he decides to throw in the old four ball, $435 in a very snappy fashion. After asking me what my stack was looking like, everyone folds and it gets back onto me. And I made the decision very early on in this hand. I'm going to three bet with the intention of five bet jamming or calling any jams. So not going to stray away from our plan here. My opponent's been really, really aggressive to this point. And moreover, you know, ace queen suited, that's pretty, it's, it's, it's a pretty hand. Let's, let's all agree to that. Ace queen might be the hand that takes you to the parking lot. You know, we've heard that all before the parking lot hand, but today it's going to be the hand that gets me to the valet. I end up five bet jamming $1,900. And before I can even blink, my opponent decides to throw his hands into the muck. Awesome. Feels great to get nearly $600 pre-flop blind, just free money without going to showdown. Number nine this week, and Poker Beast is playing at the Jamul Casino in Jamul, California. He's in a 2 5 cash game, and when you finally see the opponent's hand, you weren't guessing that, were you? 5 18 on my stack, and I pick up Pocket Queens again under the gun this time. They worked out beautifully last time. Let's see what's in store for this time. I don't really like big pocket pairs in early position because you can't three bet. So I have to put out a $15 bet and hopefully someone else takes the initiative and does it for me. The middle position player calls. The low jack throws in three reds. The high jack makes the call. The big blind defends five way action to the flop. $76 on the pot makes me a little nervous. There's a lot of players in this hand. I have bad position. If an ace or a king comes, I'm in big trouble. The dealer puts out the flop, and it's queen high. Hit my set. Pretty dry, clean board. Lots of players in the pot. Hopefully someone has something. I throw out a very small bet of 15, just asking to get sucked out by the river. The low jack comes along. Everyone else folds, and we're on our way to the turn. And it's a beautiful card. The jack of spades bringing nothing else in. I'm sure I'm sitting with the nuts. Now I'm going to amp it up a little bit. Bet half size pot, $60. 176 total in the pot. What is my opponent going to do? He grabs a big stack of chips, not 60, but 120, puts them into the middle, and min raises me. A min raise? What the hell does this mean on this board? There are barely any hands worth min raising here. The only ones I can think of are pocket deuces, pocket sevens, queen jack, maybe ace jack of diamonds. I have a really hard time deciding what to do here. If I shove, it's going to be a pot size bet. And it would just look so strong, but if I called and jammed on the river, if a diamond comes, it's really going to slow me down. If a diamond doesn't come and he has a diamond draw, like ace jack of diamonds, then he's definitely not going to call. And so I decided to go for a raise, but leave a little bit of chips behind for him so he wouldn't be too overwhelmed by the situation. I decide to almost min-raise it back, make it 300, and he goes into a monologue. He 
He says, F it and makes the call. And this brings up a very important point. If you hear those words trickle into your head, which I'm sure you do, and you throw in those chips, why not? No, no. If you say F it in your head or out loud, just make the fold. It'll save you a lot of money in the long run. He says, if you have a set, you win. Music to my ears, although I already know that this is the case. I'm sitting with the nuts on this board. But he still has money behind. Don't give away information like this. The eight of diamonds comes on the river, bringing in straights, bringing in flushes. But the only hands with diamonds that I can see him in raising the turn with are king ten, nine ten of diamonds. And I don't think he is the ace king of diamonds. He mucks his hand, but then he decides to show the table. Pocket seven, set over set, flopping middle set, and losing to the bigger set. Absolutely brutal. But his pain is my gain. Look at those chips. Absolutely massive stack in front of me. Number eight this week, and we're sticking with Poker Beast. Two in a row this week. He's still at the Jamal Casino. He's in that 2 5 cash game. And this is a beautiful turn. But can we get value out of this one? And then I pick up Jack-10 offsuit in the big blind, 873 in my stack. It folds around at the cutoff, a very good player. He makes it 20. Action folds to me. The small blind gets out of the way. I'm feeling a little loosey-goosey. I make the call, playing this out of position, looking for a straight or a straight draw, maybe two pair, maybe three tens. Let's see what the dealer has in store. He burns, he turns, three, king, queen, open-ended baby. Just what I put my chips in the pot to see. Of course, I'm going to check it over the cutoff. And he throws in 25 real quick. I match it with the green. We, we go to the turn. And it's the Ace of Hearts. An angel has landed. The most beautiful card I could have seen. Sitting with the nuts. I check it to him. And he bets 50, keeping the spot small. I need to get some more chips in there. Of course, check raising looks sketchy. But it could also look like a bluff. I go for 150. Very reasonable. Not too big. Not too small. Just right. Six greens. The play is on you, Jersey boy. He's shuffling his chips, but not going anywhere. Puts in the extra 100, and I'm licking my lips, looking for a clean river. It's the deuce of spades, as clean as it gets. And now I'm just wondering how... Excuse me, sir, we're in the middle of a hand. Now I'm just wondering how much money can I get out of him. I'm not going to check to him. I go and grab my stack of greens. Is 325 enough? I think it's going to be perfect. Surely if he calls 150, he can make a call on the river for $350 into a $722 pot. Since this guy is a really good player, he's probably comparing the amount of bluffs I have versus the amount of made hands I have. My made hands are pocket threes, pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket aces, ace king, ace queen, a straight with jack 10, and my only bluffs are king queen through king nine of hearts, maybe four or five of hearts. So there's more value hands in my range than bluffs. And I hear what I do not want to hear whatsoever. That's right. He said, this is such a nitty fold. Oh my goodness. He's got something strong and he's sniffed it out. He's read me like a book. He confidently takes his card protector off and flips up ace king suited ace king suited top two pair tosses it into the muck. Great play. Wish I was playing against anyone else because I definitely would have picked that pot up. I can't believe it. I'm actually kind of shook. It really took me out of my element. I thought about just getting up and leaving. I had to take like a 10 minute break. I just couldn't believe that he made that fold. But when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Number seven this week. And Jamin Burton is playing in a 510 cash game at the Bellagio in Vegas. And this is a really lovely example of internal narrative from Jamin here. Something that I'm sure we could all be better at before making our plays. One limp. Action folds around to the button, and although the straddle is not on, he elects a larger than normal raise size, $50. We look down at a pretty strong hand and ace-queen suited from the small blind, but before we can act, the big blind calls. Out of turn. He quickly realizes that this isn't the bedroom, and thus not the place to be premature. He pulls his bet back. His action, though, solidifies the action I need to take. I raise to $140 here, leveraging the fact that he has already told the button and myself that his hand is strong enough to call the large button bet. My raise here also sends a signal. It says, 
I know I could just call, which would force the big blind to call, probably bring the limper in, and then all four of us would see a flop, but I'm choosing to raise anyway because I have a monster. My change of action allows the big blind to fold. The limper surprisingly calls, which screams, I have a pocket pair, or I want to see a flop with ace king. An action is now on the button. He doesn't tank at all and decides to call. Him choosing to call versus re-raise shrinks his range drastically. His hand is now reduced to mostly weaker aces, a handful of suited kings or queens, some jack-10 suited type hands, and a ton of pocket pairs. The flop, 10 of diamonds, 5 of clubs, 3 of spades, unless one of those two specifically has pocket tens, most likely misses both of them. However, I still have the betting lead and an uncapped range, meaning I could still have aces, kings, queens, all the things. With around $420 in the pot, I see bet to 130. The limper folds very quickly. An action is back on the button. If he folds, that's great. But honestly, I'm not really expecting a fold just yet as a lot of his range contains two overcards. Winning this pot will definitely take two, if not three, barrels. He calls the 130. The turn Jack of Diamonds is fantastic for my actual hand, but in reality, there weren't many turn cards I would have checked. Maybe I would have checked a queen. Maybe. With the villain having about $1,000 behind, I bet $350 on the turn. Still with an uncapped range, I'm letting him know that it's likely that he's about to catch my entire stack on this river. If he wants to just hold on with pocket nines or ace 10 suited, good luck, sir. The fact that I don't have any apparent plans to slow down appears not to be lost on him. After about 25 seconds, he finds the fold. Number six this week, and Mariano is playing in a 2550 100 cash game. That's right, a 2550 100 cash game at the Hustler Casino in California. And if you've ever wondered how to play 7 4 suited, well, this is one way. The $200 straddle is on, early position limps, and I raise with 7 4 of spades. Pretty weak hand to raise with, so I wouldn't do this super often, but here we are. I make it a thousand and get called by the big blind and the limper before going to a flop of 986 with two spades. What's interesting about this is that even though I flop a ton of outs, it's a board that will typically favor the callers more than the raiser. However, my two opponents in this hand aren't really the type of players that I would expect to use that against me, so when it checks to me, I bet $2,000. Only the big blind makes the call, and we get no help on the turn. The king of diamonds. He checks again. This time I bet $6,000, hoping to get a fold from any flopped pairs, but unfortunately, he calls again. Looking for some help now, and what do you know, the ten of clubs arrives just in time, giving me a straight. He's got around thirteen or 14000 left, so when he checks, I'm going for it all. It's questionable whether or not he would actually call with a worse hand. If he wouldn't, that makes my bet pretty bad. But luckily he does end up calling and we beat King Queen. Mariano again in this one. Number six and number five for Mariano this week. This time he's playing at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. He's in a 2550 cash game. And this is a dream flop for Mariano here. But what is going to happen on the turn? Once again, up against Doug Polk as he opens to 250 and Andrew calls on my right. I'm on the button with pocket jacks, a very strong hand, so I raise it up to 1100. Action folds back to Doug and he decides 1100 is not enough and bumps it up to $4,000. Andrew folds and it's back on me. Well, I'm not going to fold. Not going to raise, so I call in position, and we go to a flop. There's a four, and a six. And a jack. And a jack. Oh, my God. Danger Will Robinson for Doug Polk here. My goodness gracious. Bought in for heaps. 127,000. Mariano sitting at 47.7. Loving life. Yeah, the flop is magical. Jack 6-4, giving me top set and my opponent bottom two pair. He continues with a quarter pot bet, and given how deep we are, I think a raise is a good option for sure. 
especially since I would consider raising with some bluffs, but I choose to call this time and keep all his bluffs in the mix. However, one of the downsides of calling is, we might get a turn card that kills the action if he has an overpair or whatever, and that's exactly what happens as the Eight of Diamonds comes out. This time he checks, as I would expect him to do with almost all of his hands, so now it's my turn to bet. I settle on $4,000, and after a few seconds, he makes the call. Seems to me like he's got an overpair, so when the river comes to nine of hearts and he checks again, I'm going for another bet. In terms of sizing, I think smaller makes more sense given the board, so I throw out $5,500, and after some deliberation, he decides on a call. Much to my surprise, he shows 6-4 suited which is kind of heartbreaking considering how much bigger this pot could have been, but oh well, never gonna complain about winning a $30,000 pot. Stunned, an unfortunate flop indeed, and a favorable one for Mariano, wins himself a $31,000 pot. Number four this week, and Rob Rickerman is playing at the win in Vegas. He's in a 2-5 cash game, and this is a really interesting one from an observer perspective. Do we think there was any intention behind the question from the under the gun player? Hmm? Let us know in the comments below. Next, we are on the button with pocket queens. Under the gun player limps. He's the same opponent from last hand. Hijack limps, and I raise to 25. Both players make the call, so we go three ways to a flop. Seven, six, deuce, rainbow. Great flop for queens. Both players check to me, and I bet 40 with the overpair. And we get calls from both opponents. So we go three ways to a nine of clubs on the turn. They both checked to me again, really not a great card as straights and two pair combos get there. Plus I was somewhat concerned on the flop after getting called by both on such a dry board so I just checked back for pot control, although I probably should be betting at a higher frequency there. Right as a 10 comes out on the river, under the gun player says, excuse me, stop right there, did I act on the turn? So he says he never checked, the dealer thought he checked, floor must be called over. So floor comes over, they each explain their side of the story. Dealer isn't quite sure after everything if he checked or not. She said, you know, she thought he checked, so she moved the action along. That's why we both checked. He said he never checked. Nobody really knows. So the floor is going to go ahead and give him the opportunity to act on his hand on the turn, which he indeed decides to check after all of that uh, commotion. But what's going to happen now, the 10 is going to go back in the deck, which is a terrible card for our hand. It's going to go back in the deck and have a chance to come back out. So... She shuffles it back up, and what do you know, the river, we get upgraded. The queen of diamonds hits, giving us top set. Now he checks, next player checks, nobody seems interested. I bet 100, both players fold. Number three this week, and Rampage is playing in an $1,100 tournament at the Harrah's Casino in Cherokee, North Carolina. And in this one, would any of us have found the call on this river? The following hand, we battle our buddy David out of the small bun again. He's to my right, and action folds to him, and he raises to 12,000. I look down at queen seven offsuit in the big blind, and I think this is a decent candidate to defend and battle against. I'm always happy to play against some solid competition. He is certainly one of those players, so I make the call and see a flop of 8-5 deuce to clubs. He starts with a check here, and now on this board texture with queen high, uh, I'm just going to blast because I like being aggressive. So I bet out 20,000, and for 20,000 here, he decides on a call. So going to get a little dicey, and when the turn is the jack of hearts, he checks for a second time, and I decide on a bet of 26,000. Honestly, I don't think this is the best play or best bet in the world. To be honest with you, in the moment, it's not well thought out because I have queen seven. I'm just trying to bet to win. Anyways, uh, he makes the call and I have a whole lot of nothing. So I'm pretty uncomfortable in this spot. Oh God, how am I going to get out of this one? The river comes the four of hearts. So six, seven gets there with a straight and he checks again for a third time. What do I do with queen seven off suit here on this board? Do I give up? Do I go for it? There's about 110,000 in the middle, and what's the sizing that I should go with? Ultimately, I end up thinking I'm all in. Gotta maximize fold equity. We are relatively close to the money, and it's really nerve-wracking to go all in with queen high as a bluff, especially over betting the size of the pots. But I think I just have to pull the trigger here, sacrifice my tournament life, because I'm not here just to make the money. 
I'm here to win the damn thing and you gotta have chips to do so. I pull the trigger, announce it. I am all in. And this player asks for a count. He counts it out and it's 143,000 total. This is a massive all in at this stage of the tournament. He covers me. So if he somehow makes the call, I am out of the tournament and my last couple hours worth of work will amount to nothing. But he thinks about it tanks it over and talks through his thought process again, as he usually would. We've seen him do it when I had a full house and now I have nothing. Throughout his tanking, he announces his hand of 3-4. He says he loses to bluffs like 6-4 and that might go for it. And he takes his time and he's really considering calling with a pair of fours. He was open on it on the flop and ended up hitting a pretty bad pair. But the fact that he's thinking about it for this long, two to three minutes in, shows how much of a read he has on me. Ultimately, he ends up folding. Thank God. My goodness, I was sweating that out so hard, screaming fold in my head. And after a long tank, he does. Still got to give him props for trying to read the situation as right as possible. This fold only works against some really good players, and he's certainly one of them. Happy to win this one, and that was quite a sweat that our buddy gave us here. Number two this week, and Evan Stewart Paul is playing at the Horseshoe Casino in Baltimore, Maryland. He's in a 1 3 cash game, and we're just not sure how this hand could get any better. Maybe if there were more callers, Evan, huh? Until we pick up pocket fives, there's a race to 16 from the tight player from the ace jack hand. I like to make the call, and the OMC to the initial raiser's right makes the call. We see a flop three ways that comes jack, seven, five. We flop bottom set here. Unfortunately, both players check it to me, and I like to check hoping one of them bets on the turn. The turn comes the four of clubs, and unfortunately, both players check again. Now it's time to start building a pot. I bet small to $15. And good for us, both players elect to make the call. Now if the flop wasn't good enough, the river is overkill. The river comes, the last five in the deck giving us quads. Both players check it to me again. And I think a lot about sizing here. And elect to bet somewhat small here to $40. The OMC folds, and now it's back on the initial razor. He thinks about it for a bit and eventually elects to make the call. We show our hand and obviously we're good and the player mucks. Nice to get some value there with quads and this hand brought my stack back over our initial buy-in. Even better, we're now on the board for the high hand promotion. Our hand just needs to hold for 13 minutes and we'll lock up an additional $500. Will our hand hold? Of course not. Someone makes quad tens about five minutes later. So no high hand bonus for us, but oh well. And at number one this week, taking the top spot is Lex Ozias. Lexo, he's playing in a 2-5 cash game at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. And surely the river can't bring tragedy to this hand. Surely not. I'm going to cut off here with pocket 10, straddles off this hand, under the gun raises to $15, we're super deep stacked so I decide to 3 bet to $75, he makes the call, heads up here in a 3 bet pot, in position, the board comes out 10 high, we make top set the nuts, man, it feels good to run good in Texas, my opponent checks, I bet $115 and he makes the call. The flop is good, but the turn gets even better. It's another 10. We make quads, and my opponent checks over to me. It's kind of an interesting spot. What should we do here with quads? Obviously, we want to try to get paid. I actually think against this particular player, if I check back here, he may turn some hands into a bluff on the river, so I allow him to try to catch up or bluff here on the last card. I check back. The river card's a seven of clubs. Front door flush gets there. I'm praying he has a hand like pocket sevens, or maybe the ace high flush. I am really hoping he leads out with a bluff or a value bet so I can raise big, but not this time he checks over to me. When under the gun checks this river, I think he has a hand with showdown value that he's looking to just check call. So I want to bet a sizing that he can call with all of his smaller pocket pairs. So I throw out $175 and without thinking for too long, my opponent makes the call and as you can probably expect, quads are good and we get some more chips pushed in our direction. 
What's funny is that quad tens are actually the third best hand on this run out. Nine six of clubs and jack nine of clubs are both straight flushes. How sick would it have been to make quads in Texas and lose to a straight flush? It would have been good for the vlog, but bad for my bankroll. Phew. <laughs> Thank goodness for that, Lexo. Who knew you would find yourself with the top third hand on the river with quads? Fortunately, they held up though. A bit of a relief given the possible hands opponents could have had in that one. And so that's it, folks. Another episode from Suited Aces of 10 of the Best. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribing certainly helps the channel out a whole bunch. And until next time, good luck at the felt.